Good morning and welcome to the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. My name is Ken Lakeys and I run the shop. And today we have with us Beth Crumbs, who is the Colcott Award winning author of these and other books. And we're so excited to have you here with us today, Beth. Thank you. So in various times, and even uh, you know, even relatively recently that I've considered going back to public school teaching, and actually my kids say, my daughter's um, wonderful college now, and they still have books, they say, don't do it. Not all the kids are like us. Uh, and even, you know, motivated and, and excited and, and all that. And but when I go to these school visits, I often say, oh, I kind of miss it. I would think it would be very inspiring for you. I think the, the bigger influence on children's books for me has been having kids and reading books to kids. Because they all, it always has surprised me, you know, when they were young, what they would really notice in a book that I wouldn't necessarily think it was so looking at the book through your eyes has, has I think, helped me more than I thought for sure. No, you, your first book. And I was a good friend in college with Sally Maybar, and she was a good college friend. And so we would, I would visit her several times a year, and she always said you should take back children's books. And mm -hmm. Yeah, so she got me. So you became out. involved with the CBWI? That's right. The, CBWI. the Society of Children's Book Writers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you in New Hampshire at that point? Or yeah. What stage of their career? Oh, yeah. Right? They, if you're not published, they call you pre-published. And actually, I didn't even hear about the SCBWI until, I don't know, five years into my college writing career. And I wish I had heard here. Well, so the one thing I tell everyone yeah, yeah. who approach me and let me know how to get into it. Well, one thing that I think I, I did wrong over the years was, um, not necessarily did wrong, but I sent all my promo pieces to art directors. And I think not realizing that in so many publishing houses, it's the editor who makes the choice. Yeah, I think that maybe now your advice would be both. The fact that I was, I, you know, that's those were the people on my list that I would send my promo cards to. Uh, but I, Ann Ryder saw a cover I did for Cricket Magazine in a bookstore in Riverside. So she saw that and, and called me and asked to see my portfolio and I sent that out. So a couple of, twice in my illustration career I've had agents, but it's been for editorial illustration work and it hasn't always been a happy situation for me. So getting into children's books, I've been working with Adam Agent all these years, and I couldn't have done that if I didn't have one specific editor who was almost like an editor agent to me, and that was Ann Ryder who's been kind of coaching me along and getting me into manuscript when I was in Chicago. Well, she, she's brilliant. <laughs> she's brilliant. She's got all the right instincts. She's incredible. And her colleagues at Hope and Mitchell Park are fundamental. And she never outright gives you a suggestion. She just will phrase a criticism in a way that makes you kind of discover that on your own. I see. There was one page in, in uh, The House in the Night where, <laughs> I don't know to think of this, but I don't know what I was thinking, but on the very first book I made, I did for it, the child's bedroom had a wood stove in it, and her, her sticky note for the first page where we see the inside of the bedroom was, oh, um, she wrote a little note, sure about the wood stove in the bedroom. It sets off alarm bells for me as a mother. And I thought, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why would this little young child have a wood stove in their bedroom? Um, so but, she but that's very thing. discreet. I'm oh yeah, yeah. Sure. She she could have said, I would have said, take the wood stove out. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so uh, all of her comments are kind of like that. She's very gracious. Sure Only one person in my family do I trust. And that's my daughter, Marjorie Leeds, who's now 16. And uh, she will tell all my parents. But everybody else will say, that, that wasn't nice. But, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but she will tell all my parents. She's not afraid to hurt my feelings, I guess. And does, does Anne know about Marjorie? Yes. And she will say, Anne will say, what does Marjorie say? Yeah. And Swirl by Swirl was the first book that I actually initiated, because I'm the writer and start writing. But I, after I finished, yeah, not many people know this. After I finished The House of Night, I had this dry spell of like six months or more where I didn't have any manuscript offered to me. I was before at Wonder Caldecott, and I was happy as clams, painting landscapes and doing crap wood engravings and you know, doing my own artwork. But then you start to get a little nervous about are they ever going to be offered another manuscript? So I thought I would um, come up with a, my own idea. And I always wanted to do puzzles because wonderful little puzzles that were done in the late 60s. 
piece by Sandy Miller. So I did a whole ton of pencil drawings for puzzle designs and little round shapes. And I noticed that all of these designs, all of the figures in these designs, whether it be a dragon or a you know, pug dog, had spirals. So I thought maybe I can do you know, a, a shape book or a series of shape books, and maybe this would be something I could write myself. And of course, knowing Ann Ryder and having done so many projects with her, she was very willing to help me with my idea, which is, you know, normally you wouldn't even be agent to get, you know, a project like that to look at by an editor. So I sent her um, a little book dummy, and she wanted to see the project more geared towards spirals in nature, not all kinds of spirals, because I had things like um, flat iron work and braided rugs and the top of your electric stove with a burner with a spiral. So I re dummied it into a kind of a spiral with nature thing, but she wanted more guts, like more writing hmm. guts. And I said, oh, I'm done. I can't do that. I'm not a scientist and not a writer. So at that time, Joyce Simmons, who I had met actually in Chicago, emailed me and said, oh, I hear, and she already worked with Anne quite some time. She said, oh, I hear through the grapevine that you're working on a book about spirals in nature, and I've been throwing that idea around. Uh, for a while, and she would collaborate, and I wrote back, yes, and within a week she wrote a uh, manuscript, it was turned down, and then another week she wrote another, well, she liked the manuscript, I storyboarded the whole thing, turned down, she wrote another manuscript, I storyboarded it, and it was accepted. So it was much more of a collaboration um, than any other project. Yeah, it was cool. But, you know, it certainly still is a signature, you know, when the first manuscript she wrote was turned down, and said, Joyce, you're writing to best pictures. You're not. You're not thinking of the writing as coming first and being the most important thing. So forget about. You know, Joyce is trying to make it easy for me to to write to pictorial ideas I already have. But she had to scrap that and go back and just write something that was, um, you know, great writing. So. What about so, all the like, little dance that the oh three of you were in? I have no idea how many emails have gone back and forth and still do about this project. Yeah. That's not a writer, I'm not a writer, you know, honestly. And people always say, oh, poo poo, you just don't believe in yourself that way. But that's not what I'm interested in, really. I would rather do the books, but I want to design wallpaper. I want to learn about interior design. I want to do fabric design. I want to do graphic design. Like, I'm, a, I'm an artist, you know, I'm an artist and a designer. And when I can do books, I love to do books, but I want to do books. Science was always my worst subject, and still the word science gives me the heebie-jeebies. You know? <laughs> but I so but to do these science books with Joyce, um, her writing is just so approachable and interesting. It's been fun to do the research for these books to learn about, you know, the subject matter. And um, although I could still not explain the Fibonacci sequence to you if you asked me, even. <laughs> Well, the sitting hands praise is a little, a little bit more. Um, the manuscript was the original. The manuscript that was accepted was not written in that sequence, and it was Anne who suggested we start with snuggling, end with snuggling, and that the section before the end should be the the whirlpool, which builds to the tornado, which builds to the spiral galaxy, and then back to the snuggling. So. That kind of whirlpool tornado uh, galaxy section was in the middle of the book. We started, we had uh, originally started with the Nautilus, which we thought was a little complicated, a little hard uh, for kids. So it was Anne who kind of suggested moving things around. And I don't know why editors don't get awards and big cash bonuses. You know, well, I, I don't know. There's not many authors that. I feel like I can work with collaboratively without feelings getting hurt. The comments pass back and forth. Yeah. Um, and Anne is somebody who knows when she should go in between, you know. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, Hope Mifflin contacted me and said, uh, we need your approval on how scroll by scroll looks on the iPad, is it? Yeah, the iPad. And they said, can you check it out? And I said, well, I don't have an iPad. I don't have a cell phone. And I don't know anybody who has an iPad. So they sent me an iPad so that I could look at it, and it was like somebody who worked there, somebody's iPad, they sent to me, and I had to send it right back the next day. But, and I was thinking, I'm going to hate this, this is going to be awful, I'm going to hate this, and when I saw it, I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. So I don't know.
it's not cozy. I wouldn't think it'd be cozy way to share the book with a child, and it's so much tenderness. Yeah. yeah. I, I was very surprised to hear you say that you were happy with this oh. book edition of your picture book. I, I insisted on being involved in every step of this because I these scratchboard pictures, the detail is so so tiny, and putting doing the production in of this book and. It's a lot more complicated than you would think when you look at it. The black is not pure black. The black is black plus blue, and not, you know, it's a, it was complicated. So I was very worried that the shrink, the pictures would be shrunk down even more, um, and that it would just make this mess. Do you work at size, or do you work larger? I work actually a little smaller. Than you work smaller? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought I, maybe I work through a magnifying glass. I I noticed in your. And I'm touching my eyes. Again. Yeah. Um, each book takes me about a year and a half, I would say. And then half of that is the planning stages. I mean, I would have to do scratch work. Yes. Right. When I started um, my work as an illustrator, uh, I did one of the summer spot illustrations for the magazine. But that takes a lot longer. I mean, it's a, it's a long process. And you make a mistake and you're, you're starting over every time or something, even the next day. Uh, so friends, art friends, encouraged me to try scratchboard, um, and that's my great. Yeah, with the scratchboard, I, you know, I think that uh, people think of me for a certain look. So I feel like if I change my medium, uh, in some ways, I could be starting over. Hmm. I don't know, but I like I like uh, wood engraving. I like scratchboard. I like that kind of graphic look. So yeah, scratchboard. You draw the picture of the black and white scratchboard. And uh, you can color directly on the scratch board, and some people do that, but I don't really like the look of that. So I photocopy um, the scratch board panel onto an acid-free uh, nice paper, and then I photo mount that onto a piece of acid-free gross focal brush to give it some stiff stiffness, and then I watercolor on that. And I only use a certain photocopy machine, and. Um, the kind that uh, the black line is kind of plasticky, so when I paint on it, the paint slides off the black, and the black stays really sharp. It's almost like having a silk. It's almost like painting on a silk screen copy of uh, the scratch board. Wow. But Joyce and I are kicking around an idea for another shape in nature book, and um, I'm asking her to take the first step on this. So that starting with the pictures and starting with all that. It was an interesting way to collaborate, but the manuscript really has to come first. So I presented her all of my um, visual ideas that haven't been spending months and months and months drawing yet. So um, I'm kind of curious to see what she's going to come up with when she has time. Yeah, so I hope you can go on better. Thank you so much for coming to the Art Forum. Such a great, logical.